The internet is like fire, really powerful, but super dangerous. We gotta approach it with the right boundaries. Let's pour some coffee on that. Hey guys, this is Father Brad Doyle and you're watching Coffee Talk, where we drink coffee and talk about Jesus. And today we're talking about Jesus, the church, and the internet, or social media and things like that. Um, I have a question for you first. Parents out there, if you have young kids, let's say you have a 10-year-old to a 12-year-old, would you buy a one-way ticket for your kid to another country and put them on a flight and not give them any destination, just say, hey, go to Europe and go have fun without a chaperone, without any protection, without any possibility for communication. Would you set your 10 year old free on another continent? Most likely your answer is no. And yet, that is what we do very often when it comes to the internet. When we were young, we were taught that there were seven continents. North America, South America, Australia, Antarctica, Europe, Asia, Africa. Africa. I forgot, that's it, seven. But guess what? There's another continent now, and it's called the digital continent. We can reach instantly other parts of the world. We can talk to anyone, and anyone can talk to us. We can know things, and we can find things that are bad for us instantaneously. So giving our children, our young children, access, unbridled, unprotected, without any boundaries, access to the internet is like dropping them off on a foreign continent without any guidance. Here's some statistics. I got these statistics from a group called Fight the New Drug. They're a group that battles pornography. The average age of first exposure to pornography is 11 years old. 11, that's the average age. So obviously there's some kids that, that uh, experience that or get exposed to it earlier. 94% of kids will see porn by the time they're 14. Almost every kid nowadays, before they're 14, by the time they're 14, will have been exposed to pornography. Uh, porn sites receive more traffic than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined each month. Netflix, everyone's got Netflix. Oh my goodness, okay. And the scenes are gradually becoming more violent and more distorted. It's a continually, uh, just pit of spiraling into grossness of, of what is commonly searched nowadays on the internet. And the danger isn't just limited to what someone will find on the internet or be exposed to on the internet. The danger is who they're going to encounter, who is going to reach out to our children. And so just three of the apps that have direct message capabilities, it's important for you to know this, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. Quite frankly, there's probably like three other ones that kids are using that I don't even know about. I don't even know what TikTok is, but you need to figure it out. What is TikTok? All my kids are doing it at the high school. I need to figure it out too. Snapchat particularly is a way that people can be, uh, can encounter our children without us even knowing it. Okay, they have direct message capabilities. I read an article recently in which these adults uh, in conjunction with the authorities uh, were putting a sting operation together. A sting operation where they were purporting, one individual woman um, who looked rather young, uh, was purporting herself to be someone who is 15 or younger. And they went live with a, an account on Snapchat and on Instagram, which are picture sharing sites. And within minutes, within minutes, adult people were reaching out uh, to groom and inappropriately contact this person who they thought was a, a young person. They thought it was your kid. They thought it was one of our children. That article just blew my mind because it's not just about what they'll find. Right? It's not just about pictures or videos our kids will be exposed to. Without any boundaries on social media apps, we are actually letting people into our children's room, into their pockets, into their cell phones. 
and that's the, the world, the continent that our children are living on. So what do we do about it? I have three ideas. Number one, we have to speak to our children. And I know this is hard, you're like, really? You want me to talk about pornography to my kids? Yes. Um, and there's different age appropriate ways of doing that. One good book that I suggest to parents is Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. And it's an age appropriate way of starting that conversation without even having, like it even can happen before the sex talk happens. Um, the age range is from seven to 12, okay? That they can read this book and you can read this book with them. And it places the conversation in that context, like right, there's bad pictures and there's good pictures. And whenever you encounter bad pictures, you should like turn around, go to an adult, go to me, go to your parents and tell them about it and turn away. Because our kids are being exposed to pictures before they even know what they're seeing. And it changes their brain. And so we have to equip them. Good pictures, bad pictures are for uh, seven to 12. And there's actually a good pictures, bad pictures junior, which is from like three to six. I know it sounds crazy that we have to do this, but I want you to look into it. So one, we gotta talk to our kids and get ahead of the internet, get ahead of predators, get ahead of the spirit of the world, which wants to take the innocence of our children. We need to be proactive. Number two, protect this house. Remember that old uh, Under Armour commercial? Will you protect this house? <gasps> yeah, well, that's what you need to do. You need to protect this house. Um, and guess what? Your children's devices are absolutely a part of your house. An app that I suggest for all electronics in the family, it could be a family uh, affair, and it's called Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes, okay? Now, Covenant Eyes is a filter, but it's not merely a passive filter. It's actually an accountability system. So every search that happens, every website that goes through these apps that you place it on, um, or place your electronics with this app on it, will be sent to an administrator. And you could be the administrator for your family and give you know different kids at different age levels, different responsibilities and um, freedoms. And so you can set that. Covenant Eyes is really good. Why? Because we will never defeat pornography and pornography addiction and unchastity and all this when it comes to the internet with inaccessibility. It's not just about having a filter. As we said, 94% of kids, no matter what, will probably be exposed to pornography by the time they're 14. It's not asking the question, if they'll be exposed. It's literally your kids. The question you should ask yourself is when and what am I doing to protect them and to prepare for them for that moment? So accountability is the answer, not inaccessibility, right? They'll grow up, guess what? And they're gonna be adults and they make their own decisions. You have to help form them and make them accountable to other people. Uh, another website is Fight the New Drug. Just put it in Google, Fight the New Drug. It's, uh, they got really good graphics and they're hip with the youths. It's, it's really beautifully done um, and it's raising awareness about the harmful effects on, of pornography on society and our children's brains. And I would like to personally suggest limiting particular apps, social media apps for our children um, through something called screen time, okay? So screen time is uh, part of iOS if you have an iPhone. A lot of people have iPhones. I'm sure there's compatible things in other devices, uh, but iPhones get really a cool um, part of it is called screen time where you could set the amount of screen time um, you yourself and your children can have and what they can access. We have to be proactive with it, so look into that and get your family in order and ready and protected with this um, proactive approach. And lastly, be aware. Be aware. We cannot be ostriches burying our heads like, no, 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 it's not happening. Guess what? It is happening. Stop. Take your hands off your ears. Open your eyes. I promise you it is happening. I once taught high school. And when I was teaching, one of my friends who taught high school before, is a sem he's now a priest in the Archdiocese of New Orleans, and he said, hey, how many kids have you caught cheating? And I said, oh, I caught none. My kids don't cheat. And he's like, no, no, they're cheating. You just haven't caught them. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right. I don't think so. And he goes, well, do this, 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 the next time they take a test. I did that, that, and that, and guess what? I caught two of them. I just was ignorant. I was naive. I didn't see 
because I didn't want to see. You need to see, because guess what? It's a reality, and it's a responsibility on all of us to protect ourselves and to protect our kids. So be aware, be proactive, protect this house. Amen.